purpose, friends, that if you come to these programs, your life is going to become free. You are going to become a new creation. You are going to accept God as your God, Jesus as your Savior. And He knows that if you keep coming, His kingdom is going to lose you. Therefore, He's going to oppose you all the way through. According to the Scriptures, Satan is the father of all lies. According to the Scriptures, Satan is the father of all crimes, of all murders. He is a murderer from the beginning, friends. Witchcraft is a, is a creation of Satan. Spiritualism is a creation of Satan, dear friends. The Bible tells us that he is a liar and the father of it. You cannot trust him. And above all, in Satan began the kingdom of death. What did I say? In Satan began the kingdom of death. Suffering was invented by him. Torture was invented by him. Sickness was developed by him. Friends, all the pestilences, all the natural disasters you see, all the evil you see today is not an invention of God. It is an invention of this evil being who delights himself only on one thing. And it is making war against the kingdom of Satan and making humans suffer as much as he can. Please do not think that Satan is a creation of, of the church. Satan has existed before the church began, friends. Satan knows you from the moment you were born. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your strengths. He knows what makes you tick. And he knows you, friends, and controls you because every human being is a puppet of Satan. We will study it tomorrow. As we study the subject of, of discovering self, understanding self. But friends, Satan is a real being. I have confronted him. I have heard his voice. I have met people who have been demon-possessed. Let me tell you the story of a young man in Papua New Guinea when I went to run a mission there an evangelistic program. We had 15,000 people coming every night to the programs. We were preaching in an open field. There were thousands of people coming and the Holy Spirit was manifesting and moving upon the, 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 the audience in an amazing way. Every night, hundreds of people would come to the front to give their hearts to the Lord. People were being healed and converted. And for a couple of nights, the Lord began to impress me that a demon-possessed man was going to come. He came. It was a Wednesday night meeting when we were having prayer for the sick at the back of the auditorium after the program had finished. Suddenly this man comes to me and says, Pastor Sam, could you pray for me? Of course, I, of course I said to him, what is your problem? And he says, when I pray, when I kneel down to pray, Pastor, he says, it's as if a hand picked me up and throws me from wall to wall. I cannot pray. I'm afraid of praying. And I said to him, have you been involved in the occult? Yes, yes, Pastor Sam, he says. A couple of years ago, I, 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 I began to play with a Ouija board and, uh, and do things. And, uh, and uh, I, said to, I said to the pastor, stay, we will leave him for, for the end. So after we prayed for everyone, this man stood and there were other pastors and elders around him. And I said, could you please confess that Jesus is your Savior? And he, says, he said, yes. And then he says, and he couldn't say the name Jesus. Confess that Christ is your Savior. He says, Jesus is my Savior. Very softly. So I knew that he was demon-possessed. So I put my hands on him and I prayed for him. And when I said, Amen, he fell down to the ground as if he was drunk. He was not drunk. And so we took him, we put him in a bed. And we began to pray in the name of Jesus for the demons to live. And he be began to speak with other voices. Metallic voices, these this funny weird sounds would come out of him, you know, and he would curse God and he would say all these things. And, and, and for about half an hour we prayed, prayed, and, and the demons would not come out. So the pastor said to me, Pastor, we need to go out and pray because our lives are not right. And so they went out. Some did not come back. They were too afraid. Other, the others came back and we continued to pray and sang hymns and read the scriptures and eventually the demons left. And you know that young man stood up and he gave me a big hug and said, Pastor Braga, I had been demon-possessed for three years. And no one thought I was demon-possessed. They thought I was 
I had lost my mind. And today I am free. And his eyes were, you know, uh, uh, you know, just glowing. And he had a big smile. He was free at last. Dear friends, demons are real. Do not play with the idea that they do not exist. As there is a God, there is a devil, friends. As there are good angels, there are evil angels. And they are endeavoring to possess your body, to try to grab your mind, because they are longing to make human beings absolute subjects of them. The time is gone. I was going to talk a little bit about the fact that Satan took control of planet Earth. And we are going to study that tomorrow. Dear friends, our parents, Adam and Eve, surrendered their loyalty to Satan. They obeyed his voice. And they gave themselves to Satan. And you know what? Satan made of planet Earth the center of his kingdom. And how can you know, Pastor Sam, that he is in, in, in dwelling here and that this is his kingdom? The Bible said it. Jesus called Satan the ruler of this world. Paul calls him the ruler of the, of the heavenly places. Satan rules on planet Earth because our first parents gave him permission to take control of planet Earth. And every time you disobey God, every time you turn your back on God, it's as if you are giving Satan the keys for your house. And dear friends, as you look around, as you look at the newspapers, as you watch television, as you look at the lives of your people around and your own life, and you see suffering, you see death, you hear of rumors of war and wars, you see pestilences wiping you know, whole populations, you see tsunamis and cyclones and, and all these horrible things that are happening. People that don't know that there is a Satan, they turn their fist to heaven and say, Why? Even the insurance industry has, have called the natural disasters the act of God. What a lie, friends. What a lie. It is not God who's doing it. It is Satan who's doing it. But after he does it, like a coward child, he turns, hides, and says, it was God. It was God. I saw him. Friends, it's not God. God does not want evil for his children. If you as a mother and a father, let me just move to Jeremiah 29, 11, says this. Notice what it says. This is what God wants for you. If you were able to make an operation into God's heart and look at what he wants for you, this is what uh, he wants for you. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. What are they? Says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Does God rejoice when little children die? No, friends, He hates it. Does God lie when people die of cancer and AIDS, when they suffer in hospital for months and months? Does he lie, friends, when families are destroyed by divorce? Does he lie when little children are sexually abused and used as sex objects right through the world? Does he lie and enjoy when children are given machine guns and are used to kill others? Does he enjoy that? God is not a monster, friend. God is the creator of the universe. He is a God of love. But it is his own human race that gave the keys for the kingdom of this world to Satan. God did not create death. It was Satan who created death. God did not create sickness. It was Satan who created sickness. God did not create suffering. It is Satan who creates suffering. Dear friends, God says, I know the thoughts that I have for you. My thoughts are not of evil. My thoughts are of peace and joy. I want to comfort you. I want to heal you. I want to love you. And friends, you know that in history we have examples where the kingdom of God has been adopted and where the kingdom of God has been adopted and he has become the king of that nation. There was no war. There was no pestilence. No disease. Oh, everything was joy.